Hi there, today we're going to take a look at CCR2004. So this is the new generation of Microtik routers. Uh, the new generation because it's based on the number two instead of one. Uh, and the differences in processor. So Microtik has a problem because the Lera processors that were used in the previous routers are not supported by Linux core anymore and that's probably the reason that they uh, chose uh, another type of processor for the next version of their cloud core routers and that's the ARM 64-bit chip it appears that it's the one over here with four cores and quite high frequency for Microtik case uh, at 1.7 gigahertz. So this router is running uh, router OS number six. We expect it to be running seven soon and it has a clear upgrade path for the future and we cannot say the same for the Tilera processors. So the, the main point of this presentation is to measure the throughput of this router. Uh, Microtik is stating here on the website somewhere that it should do somewhere around 26 megabits per second but they do not say how this was tested they just mentioned the, the equipment they were using for those tests so we're gonna imagine that they had in mind some kind of real performance tests using for example two servers two routers interconnection between the routers and because we don't have the 25 gigabit cable we're gonna instead use two 10 gigabit SPF direct access cables and connect them using LACP protocol so that should be a little bit less than 25 gigs but still quite okay so let's take a look at our setup so we have two servers here uh, and they are now connected via these SPF cables uh, from one to the other here you see four ports for two cables so we'll do the first speed test like this and then we'll switch um, so that the first server will be connected to the first router and we already have this interconnection between those two routers in place and then the second server will be connected to the second router like into these ports here. So let's test the speed now between the servers so that we'll see what's the potential of the biggest speed we can achieve using this connection without the routers first. So we are back at the computer and we are now connected via SSH uh, to the both servers. So first and the second one. So it doesn't really matter which is which and uh, we're gonna start iperf3 as a server on the first one and we're gonna start iperf3 as a client using the other server's address as a second one hopefully this one is the right one and we're gonna use two streams because we are using LACP and one stream would only yield uh, 10 gigs okay we can even try this so this is just with one stream you see that it's running at 9.4 and something gigabits per second okay and now the second time we're gonna use two streams and you see it's going in in two blocks and it's displaying the sum and the sum is actually almost double as before at 18.8 gigabits per second okay that's it that completes the first test and we're gonna change the, the the cables and run the second test now okay let's connect the cables so we should disconnect the cable somewhere here let's take this one and this one and we'll connect them here Luckily, it doesn't matter which go one goes which. Well, we just have to turn them on the right side. Okay, great. Now we need another pair of cables. Yeah, they are here. 
then that's probably like this no like that cool connect it if this leads up then it's okay this and this one goes like this yeah and like that over here super okay so this is all connected so i already configured those two um, uh, they are in lacp modes um, so this is the first trunk this is the second trunk and again the first trunk on the second router and the second trunk on the second router and they are all in bridge mode now without using any of fastpad technology or something like this just normal bridge so let's see how it's all set up on the computer this is the first server it's called pv uh, and uh, the ports are named n07 and n08 and they are bound together using this bound zero with LACP protocol and we are using hashing policy layer 3 and 4 uh, why we are using this uh, because we will run speed test using iperf and uh, of course the, the MAC addresses and IP addresses of those servers will be always be the same so that's why we need to look at the layer 4 so that's basically a source port of the stream that's gonna be made there and if we wouldn't do it like this then uh, LACP would only use one channel because uh, the hashing algorithm wouldn't distribute the, the traffic over to uh, parallel lines it would just use one of course so this is then bound to the to the this second bridge the first bridge is just management and we have assigned it a, an IP address so we can do the the, the IP a TCP IP traffic over here uh, nothing special really here and the second server is configured the same way so the bound is using the same ports on the other server of course the same LACP protocol and this bridge is also configured the same way using another IP in the same block okay so if we now start uh, if we now try and see how how this goes let's go to this server so I'll just take a look of what address is it so this one is number 201 so I can ping the other one 202 so and it's pinging so we can start uh, iperf server on on the other one and run the iperf client from this one so I will use iperf version 3 because um, it introduces the multiple chain uh, channels so it takes like uh, if you would run several IP, iperf clients at the same time so we don't have to do it manually we're just using this so this is now started in a server mode and the client mode and two channels so you see this is not very impressive so you see what's happening now we are getting two channels one using five and something gigabytes and the second one using two and something gigabytes together they're using eight gigabytes whereas we should see something like 18 or 19 gigabytes like we will see when we connect the cables directly from one server to the other okay let's take a look how the microdeck is configured and if we can do some improvements over there so we are now at the windows computer uh, the reason is that uh, winbox is only running on windows computers you can also start it on on the macintosh but um, there are some problems and we don't want to get involved in those problems so um how what we did here so what we are looking at right now is the bonding interfaces so up down is a connection between upper and, and lower microtik and this one goes to the server 
So let's take a look at how it's configured. So I think that the problem with speed here is that Mikrotik is not treating very good the layer 3 and 4 traffic here. So maybe if we lower this to just layer 2, since the servers are already hashing and kind of routing the traffic to, to those two lines, I don't think we have to do that again here. So we'll try just to uh, change this to, to much simpler layer 2 hashing algorithms. So this is uh, now done in, at the first router and we'll do the same at the second one. So here, layer 2. So you see that the LSCP port starts right after it's reconfigured. Okay, so this is now done and we can go back to the traffic generators on our super micro servers. So if this is all right, uh, we should still be running the iperf server on the other side. So we could just repeat this command here. So you see the traffic is almost identical. So we didn't do much here. So what's the conclusion? Mikrotik can only route 8.3 gigabytes of track traffic simultaneously in both directions using this type of configurations. Uh, why did I choose those kind of co configuration? Because the real case scenario would probably be to interconnect those routers using the 25 gigabit cable. So because we don't have it, we emulated this with the LACP, which would probably be the, uh, the chosen protocol for network administrator in such a, such a case where you have a router that's supposed to do uh, 20 plus gigabyte routing and you don't have the 25 giga cable. Anyway, even if we did have the 25 gigabit cable, if we take a look at the block diagram of the Mikrotik router, uh, we can see that those two 25 gigabit ports are connected to some kind of multiplexer. They are calling it port extender. And this port extender joins 12 10 gigabit ports, which are supposedly in a separate switch chip, uh, together with this port. So this does not say how fat this line is. So we are guessing that uh, even in, in pure switch mode, if we would just switch from 25 gigabit port to, let's say, 2 of the 10 gigabit ports, we probably would not achieve the whole 25 gigabit speed anyway, because of this multiplexer here. Okay, so this concludes our video. If the responses are great, um, I'll try to do the routing scenario as well. I expect the results there to be quite the same, but you never know, we'll see. Thanks for watching and bye.